Here I'm going to show you guys how to import CSV and text files into Microsoft Excel. And this tutorial has two main functions. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to actually import the data into Excel. And then I'm going to explain how the import works, how it functions, because it's not just a straight copy paste. There are data connections that are formed almost always when you import the data into Excel. And if you don't understand that, it can create problems later down the road. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Now before we get started, let's take a look at the data that we're going to import. So I just downloaded a very simple CSV file from the GeoNames website and I revised it a tiny bit. So it's country info revised right here. Let's open that up. This is Notepad++, by the way, way better than regular Notepad. Go ahead and download it. And this is our CSV file. So we have headings in line one and then a bunch of other data here. And we will go ahead and see how it is to import this into Excel. So pretty much everything we're going to do here is on the data tab. But the first one that I want to show you is the simple, the easy, the old one that I'm sure most of you have used at some point and wondered where it is in the modern versions of Excel. So if we go over here to get data, you have from workbook, from text CSV, but it doesn't allow you to use the import wizard. Let's go get that import wizard back in Excel and use that first. It's going to allow you to create the simplest, easiest CSV text file imports with the least amount of work, in my opinion. So let's go to the File menu, then go down here to, where are you, Options. Go to Data. And here under Show Legacy Data Import Wizards, we have all the old ones that we may already be used to. The one that we want is From Text. So check that, hit OK. Now let's go back to the Data tab, Get Data, Legacy Wizards. Click From Text, Legacy. Select the file that you want to import. And if you don't see the file here, go ahead and click the text files down here, this little drop down menu. And you could go ahead and select all files. Sometimes you may have one option selected that doesn't allow you to see the specific file that you need. Then go to Country Info Revised. I'll include that in the downloadable files. Double click and we get our text import wizard. It's going to walk us through. So the first thing is we want to choose if our columns are delimited or fixed width. So when you import the data, the data, it has to know what is a column. So in a CSV or a comma separated file, you could have commas that do that or semicolons or oftentimes a tab will create the column. So we choose what we have here, delimited or fixed width. Fixed width means that you're going to choose the size of the columns. So you're going to choose it by hand and usually the data that you import will not be set up that way. That's not a terrifically good structure for most data. So we can choose delimited. Then we can choose at which row we'd like to start importing our data. So if the data you want doesn't start until row 10, you could put row 10 here. We're going to keep it at 1. Choose if your data has headers or not. You can play around with these options to see which are going to work for you. But for the most part, the default options will work just fine. Usually you just want to make sure delimited is clicked. Then we can hit next. And at any moment you can click finish and have it go ahead and import the data into Excel if you don't want to go through these steps. Go ahead and click next to go to the next step. Here is where you choose what the delimiter is. Excel will kind of try and choose the right one, but if they made a mistake, go up here and choose the right one or go down to other and you can input the delimiter there. So we will hit tab. You can see the data preview change, then go to next. Here you can choose into which format you want each column to be imported. So you can choose the columns, change the format. It's pretty simple text import stuff. There's nothing really too fancy that you can do here. We could go ahead and click advanced and you get a slightly more advanced options here, but nothing too advanced. 
I think this is kind of why Excel tried to retire this guy or hide it away because it's not terrifically advanced, but it makes our imports pretty easy if we just need simple stuff. So this is the last screen, we can hit finish. And here you can choose where you want the data to go into Excel. On the existing worksheet here, you can click the cell where you want it to start. Let's click A1 or hit down here to go to a new worksheet. But here's one thing I recommend. This is what I like to do. Before you hit OK, go ahead and click Properties. And in this window at the very top, uncheck Save Query Definition. This is what will get you the simplest import. No links to external data, nothing. The closest thing to a copy paste you're going to get. So we can hit OK. OK. The data pops in perfectly. Nice, neat, and simple. And if we want to do it quickly, so if I do it full speed, you say, wow, that took a long time. I just hit the plus arrow, open up a new worksheet. Let's do that again one more time. Get data, legacy wizards, from text, country info, revised, delimited, next, everything looks good, finish, existing worksheet, properties, save query definition, okay, okay, good to go. It's my favorite way to import a very simple, simple CSV or text data set. Most of the time, your data sets are going to be pretty simple. If you're familiar with it, you know how it's going to be laid out. You know there's not going to be any weird stuff in there. Just do that. Enable the legacy one. Do it. Next, we're going to use the default import from text and CSV method with the new versions of Excel. And you will see it has the ability to be a lot more powerful, but also a bit more annoying. So let's open up a new worksheet and get started there. Before we do that, though, I want to show you one thing just to prove that nothing happened with the current two imports as it relates to connections. On the data tab, let's click queries and connections. Nothing down here for queries, nothing down here for connections. Then we can click existing connections, no connections, tables, no tables, nothing, nothing. Now, let's go up here, data tab, you can click right here from text CSV or get data from file from text CSV, same thing. Navigate to where the data is located. We're going to do country info revised. Double click. Okay. Now, this is what it looks like when we import it using the new method. So it looks newer, cooler, all nice. We can change the character formatting here, just like in the wizard, although I didn't cover that option. You can change the delimiter here. So you've got all these options and then custom and fixed width. Go down to custom, input the custom delimiter, fixed width. Then you can determine the width here. So pretty similar. Where were we? Tab. Excel is going to try and figure out what's going on before and do it for you. And it's going to use, over here, by default, the first 200 rows to figure out what it should be doing, either tab for a delimiter or a different kind of delimiter. If you want to use a larger data set, you can go down here based on entire data set or do not detect data types. Be careful if you choose based on entire data set. The mother file from which I made this little tiny baby file for country info revised has over a million rows. So that's not even going to import correctly into Excel. So based on the entire data set for that would probably cause issues on your computer. So it's best to leave it at based on first 200 rows for the most part. And the simplest way to do it is to go ahead and click the load button. So once we click the load button, it seems much easier than before, right? Look, it's in here. It's so pretty. It's so nice. We have it on a new sheet, sheet four. Look at this. This is just boring text. But what do we have over here? By default, the queries and connection windows have popped up. And we have a lovely query. Oh, I just hovered over that. What's this? Look at all this other crap. Now, if I go over here to the data tab, we can go to existing connections. Oh, now we have a connection in the workbook. Some of you or many of you may have uh, encountered connection related errors or security warnings when you've opened workbooks before. Now we have all that stuff attached to this table instead of just the raw data. 
This can be good, this can be bad. It's bad if you don't want all this stuff because now I have to go through and remove it. That's why if it's a simple data set, you don't want any of these connections, the first method's better. However, what does this allow you to do? Make incredibly powerful queries and incredibly powerful data imports. And it allows you by default to link this data up with the data, the source data. So if I add something to the source data, this one's going to be updated. Now you can still have the data connections when we do the simple legacy data import that I showed you at first. It was just easier to turn off because I clicked the little properties button and switched it off. For this one, when I import the data, you have cancel, edit, load, or load to. Notice that when I click load to, the properties button down here is grayed out. And there is no way for me to get it back. So Excel is really trying to force me to have this data connection. The alternative is to use Power Query, but that's another step. So it's just more steps and more steps. And I'll tell you a little bit more about Power Query towards the end of this tutorial, though I'm not going to cover how to use it. Now, once we have the data like this, if we want to go ahead and kill the connection, you can go to the Queries and Connections window. If you don't see that, just go to the work or go to any worksheet, doesn't matter. Go to the Data tab, click Queries and Connections. You can go over here. You can click it and hit the delete button. It'll give you a warning. Are you sure you want to delete this? If you delete it, the query and any data that was loaded by the query will not be refreshable. So you're going to kill the connection between the source data, which was our CSV file or our text file and this workbook. You can do that if you want to or hit cancel. If you highlight over this, you can go down here and hit delete, confirm the delete, and you can delete it that way as well. Let's now go to existing connections on the data tab. You'll notice that in this case, everything was deleted. However, depending on the way that you delete the connection, it may not all come out of here. So let's go ahead and import it once more, and I'll show you another way to do this. It's going to get a little bit confusing, but bear with me. Import, import, load, sheet 5. On the Design tab, where we have this here, just like the previous one on Sheet 4, you have an option under External Table Data called Unlink. Disconnect this table from the server. It will no longer be kept up to date. Okay, so we break the connection once more between Source Data and here, right? But now watch this little guy over here in the Queries and Connections window. Unlink. This will permanently remove it from the sheet, the query definition. Do you want to continue? Yes. Now over here it says connection only. Okay, well I thought I deleted that. Did I? Did I not? I don't know. Over here I can no longer refresh the data, which I'll show you how to do in a moment, I'll show you what that does. I can no longer click properties. If I go to the data tab, queries and connections window, yes, that's still there. But now existing connections, we still have a connection. What the hell is going on? <laughs> so this can lead to warnings in your workbook. You think everything is unlinked, disconnected, no more connections? Not entirely true. And this can be a bit confusing. So if you want to go ahead and make sure you delete it completely, so it's not going to appear here, then you need to go to the Queries and Connections window and delete it from here. Then we click Delete. Are you sure? I'm pretty darn sure. Now, existing connections, no more, no moss. So you can see all we wanted to do was a simple freaking import and we got to go through all these stupid steps for data connectivity. If you don't want data connectivity, <laughs> legacy import, man, legacy import. I don't know why it's not clickable right now, but legacy import is all we want. Close this guy. New sheet. Now we can do it. Legacy wizard from text. Okay, so I've pushed that enough. Now let's look at some of the cool things that when your data is connected. I told you with the legacy one, you can connect it if you want to, but you can also easily disconnect it by clicking the properties button. Yes, this way automatically connects everything. So let's go ahead and import it one more time and I'll show you how it can be beneficial 
but uh, well how it could be beneficial depending on what you want let's go with that so good good load okay now let's go down to the bottom of our data set control arrow key down so we have 253 rows now let's go to our data set where are you sample data country info revised okay let's go down here let's add a new row right under a and so you can see a n right here a n t 530 a n a n t right here so let's say x x oh i need to use tabs here tab stuff tab more stuff and I hit Control S to save that. Now let's go back here. Everything still looks the same. Let's bring in the new data from the source file. Very simple, lots of different ways to do it. Mainly, the easiest way is go to the Data tab and hit Refresh All. It's going to refresh all connections in the workbook, though. That may slow things down or it may not be what you want. So you can go down here and you can simply hit Refresh. We need to first click within the data set. So click within the data set, and then we can click refresh, and it's just it's going to refresh just that data set, or you can see there, Alt F5. So once we do that, now you can see XX and stuff. I must have messed it up a little bit, and this is a good example of if the import contains errors, It'll show you right over here. So we have 253 rows loaded and one error. Let's click the error and see what happens. Okay, so here we have what I was going to wait a little bit longer to show you. I didn't mean to cause that error though. Is the Powy Power <laughs> Power Query Editor, and you can do lots of things in this, which I'm not going to cover right now. But what it's doing here is it's showing us the error. So this is the row, row 253, we got XX, we got stuff, but we have an error here. Now if I click that, it's going to show us, let's see, data format error, we couldn't convert it to a number, details more stuff. So it shows us the specific data that could not be converted or that caused the error, and then it shows us what, what the error was. Couldn't convert it to a number. Because Excel is automatically, I'm going to go ahead and close this window. Now that it shows you what it is, you can go through steps to fix it and tell it what to do with data like that, which we're not going to cover here. Now let's close this window. Do you want to keep your changes? Just discard everything. All the other things in this column are numbers, all the other values. And that one was not a value, so that's what caused the error. Once again, it's a good thing and a bad thing. Excel is so smart, it's telling me it doesn't like my data. Excel is so smart, it's not letting me put the data I want in there by default. <laughs> but the important part of this, the point of me doing that, was just to show you that the data that you add to your source file gets updated and pulls in here. Now, what if we delete the two rows? Let's delete the XX row and the AN row. So let's go back here, delete this row, goodbye, and let's delete this row. I'm going to hit Shift End to select everything and delete. Save. Back here. Let's click Refresh All this time. And the data is gone. Notice over here it no longer says error because the data causing the error is also gone. Now let's take a look at the other imports of this data because our source data file no longer has the row with AN. Sheet 5, let's go down. AN is still there. Sheet 4, AN will also still be here. So because we killed the data connections to these other data imports, the data was not updated. No data was added, but also no data was removed. That's very important because if you import data into Excel and you are unaware of the meaning of these data connections over here, and then you go and change your source data file because you think, okay, I imported the, da the data into Excel. I'm all good to go. Everything is safe. I can go ahead and change the source data file or I can delete all the old data and pop in some new data. Then you go back to Excel. 
you refresh your connections and all of your data is gone and that's really the problem with having these data connections like this so you need to be aware of what the data connections do they can help you with getting the most recent and updated data yes but they can hurt you if you don't realize that the data will also be deleted from Excel when it's deleted from the source file and this is why I've spent so much time talking about something that might not seem terribly important and why I showed you a very simple way to import simple data when you don't want to have to go through all these steps of remembering to delete the connections and do all of that stuff so what I want to do now, I've shown you how to import the data and how to kill all the links, is I want to quickly show you how to get rid of this table format, and then I will recover how to do the simple data import using the legacy import wizard and this data import, as well as killing the connections once and for all using the new and default data import. So here we have our data table. Let's go to sheet five where we do not have a data connection. Let's say you don't want this format. It's just a simple data table right now with the table format in Excel. So what we can do once we click anywhere in it, you will see a design tab that pops up under table tools. Click that, hit convert to range. Do you want to convert the table to a normal range? Very much so, yes. Now, if you want to get rid of all this formatting, just hit control A and go to the home tab. Go down here to the right. It's currently a little pink eraser. In other versions, it wasn't this particular pink or purple color. Go down and click Clear Formats. Now we have our nice basic data set with no weird table formatting and no data connections. OK, so I'm going to quickly delete these guys. We'll keep sheet five, sheet six, let's go to sheet three. Okay, so I'm gonna recap the legacy import right now, then I'm gonna recap the new default import and show you how to kill connections. Let's close this guy. Legacy import, first thing you have to do, go to the file menu, scroll down here to options, go to data, down here, show legacy data import wizards you get access to a bunch of them. We want the one that says from text. Remember text and CSV are pretty much the same thing. So check mark next to that, hit okay. Now go to a blank worksheet, go to the data tab, get data, legacy wizards should now be visible. Go to from text, select your data, double click, now fill out all the options as you want. I already know the options are going to be okay for my data set. If you've worked with the same data set a lot, you can be certain that it will work or pretty certain. So we hit finish. I'm going to go to properties to kill my link. Uncheck save query definition. Hit okay. Choose the cell where I want it. Hit okay. And there my data is. Just a couple clicks. Got the data here. Go to the data tab, queries and connections, verify no additional queries have been added here. Go down here, AN will not be here because I edited the actual source file and we just imported it from the source file again. So that guy's gone. Now when I show you the legacy import, I make certain to show you how to kill the data connection. And the reason for that is because if you want to keep the connection, go ahead and use the new import. So let's use the new import one, the new import feature, standard one. Go up to the data tab from text or CSV. Choose the file, double click. Excel is now scanning my file, trying to figure out what everything should be. Everything looks good. Hit load. Quick note. If you want to get to the Power Query Editor, if you want to play around with that before that tutorial comes out, go ahead and hit the Edit button right here, and it'll send you to the Power Query Editor where you can do so many cool things. Let's discard that. So from text CSV down here, we like everything, so we hit Load. Now by default, it's on a new worksheet. All of our data is completely connected 
to our source file. Any changes made there will copy over here. So that's exactly how that's going to work. And if you want to kill the connection, there are a couple different ways to do it. Even one I didn't show you, if you have clicked here in the table, go to the design tab, you could convert it to a range here. And it would remove the query definition, yada yada, as well as kill the table. You could click the unlink button here. But honestly, I think the best way, there's so many ways to do it, just remember one, the best and most certain way, go to the data tab. If you don't see the queries and connections window, go to the data tab, click queries and connections. And then in the pane over here, click the correct one, let it hover over it, go to delete and delete, or just hit the delete key. Now it's gone. It's not over here. It's not going to be in existing connections. This is the original query we did not delete. Now we've got our data over here that stays nice and safe in Excel. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you're starting to get an understanding of how importing data into Excel works and how to use the legacy as well as the new standard import features for Excel. I'm going to cover a lot more topics related to this in the premium course that I didn't have time to cover here and I just can't fit here. So we'll cover lots of things of how to change the data when you import it, a couple different ways to pull CSV data into Excel without having to go through all this import process, and lots of other cool things. So make sure to check that out when it's made available. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.